Okay, so we're broadcasting. And we're early, so people aren't coming in yet. <laughs> I'm just waiting for the clock to tick over one minute. <laughs> <laughs> I see people are joining me. Okay, there we are, we're official. Well, welcome everyone to the May desktop time. We're so happy you could join us today. Uh, we're extremely excited to have Don Brolin with us, who's there appearing live from the Cash Cab. No, it's actually in New York, right, you said? I wish it was Cash Cab. I'd be making money while I'm sitting in here, just saying. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, actually, every time I watch that show, I think, man, I, I'd never make it. Those questions are way too hard for me. So I'm not smart enough for that. <laughs> not I'm not smart as a fifth grader either. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and we also have Debbie Berkland with us from T-Sheets. Thank you, Debbie, for joining us today and giving us an introduction to T-Sheets. Um, so I'm going to start off just by um, going through their formal introductions. And I did give them a chance just so you know they could embellish if they wanted to. So Don was telling us about um, jumping out of airplanes and rescuing and burning people. And so, but I'm going to pare it down to what was on the website. So uh, Don is a certified public accountant and advanced certified QuickBooks Pro Advisor and managing member of Powerful Accounting in her free time, right? In my free time. Uh, a nationally recognized accounting, tax, and QuickBooks consulting firm. She rediscovered the importance of the relationship between good accounting records, good business processes, and running a successful business through her own experience as a business owner, and now strives to leave people better than she found them. I think that's pretty cool. Working with, but not limited to, small to medium-sized businesses, including contractors, nonprofits, retailers, and service providers. Don provides accounting, write-up, reporting, off-site CFO resources, tax return preparation, and audit support services. Almost read that as a goal. Uh, and then Debbie <laughs> has had the privilege of supporting uh, pros, QB Pro Advisors, CPAs, accountants, bookkeepers, and working with them to determine if T-Sheet's time tracking solution would be a great fit for their clients. This includes providing personalized demos of T-Sheets, phone support, as well as technical support of T-Sheets. So thank you very much again, both of you, for joining us. Um, Don today is going to be talking to us about everything tax, although we just got through tax season. She actually had let me know that uh, there's a lot of things that we should be aware of, um, both as individuals and business owners and some pitfalls and things we should avoid. Um, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn the floor over to you, Don. And, uh, yeah. and again, you have remember my signals we talked about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I know that it's supposed to only be a one hour webinar, but it's going to be like a five hour webinar because I yeah, have that's to right. that's tell you about. <laughs> Of what's been going on but thank you so much for having me on and of course I wouldn't want to be on with anyone else than Debbie from T-Sheets so there's that um, I am a T-Sheets lover I can't help it um, but yeah so um, I'm actually really excited to talk to you about some of the tax stuff tomorrow I will be at a criminal tax seminar um, out in Connecticut and we're doing a lot of IRS representation work right now so we work with the IRS directly um, on on their audits and so they're auditing typically small businesses and we're working with a law firm who refers the clients over to us and says, hey, listen, we need to get this person straightened out. And so we, of course, use, we use QuickBooks Online, but we also use desktop and with, with a lot of the criminal cases because we need to control the data file, we utilize the desktop to recreate and, and, and pull back together information. So some of the biggest tax things that we're running into with clients, number one is if there's some kind of a criminal audit, they can go back six, seven years, and there may be you know, records that they need from 2010. And so we're finding people who, unless they can recreate these books and go back to the banks and get the bank statements, you know, they, some of these people are in trouble. And it's not even if they, were in they really had the intention of the tax avoidance um, or tax evasion really is what it is. Um, we're finding that clients, even if they're innocent, they're, they don't have their records. So one of the biggest things that I would want to give people a tip about is to retain your records. Um, and I'm saying this for end users specifically, but as a professionals, we should be, they, they only require us to hold three years of returns, but I, we hold it all forever since the inception of the client. And so one of the big challenges we're seeing is when there is a criminal tax investigation where they're going back to 2010, we're not able to get what we need. 
And we also are experiencing certainly the communication with the IRS when it comes to desktop files or QuickBooks Online files. What files from a tax return perspective can you give them? Period copies, of course, from a QuickBooks file. Um, some of the auditors are starting to learn to look at the audit trail. Um, and so there's a lot of, th of, of game playing when it comes to those types of investigations. But when it comes to tax prep, I was just, I was said to you a little bit earlier, I just did a presentation at City Field, which was super exciting because I love sports. Um, and so talking to small business owners and saying, hey, listen, you know, not just for tax purposes, certainly, but are you tracking your time on how much, and I understand people have this whole concept of what is your time worth? Well, first of all, in my opinion, my time is worth a whole ton. You know, of course, I mean, it was, mom, what are you doing? So anyway, sorry, my sidekick over here is, I don't know what she's doing. She went through a tunnel today. She's freaked out. So um, anyway, but we're finding with these business owners that they've got to start keeping track of information. So Robin, I love Robin's question, hard copies. So we are 100% mobile. My topic today with, uh, at, this, at this event was mobile monster. And so powerful accounting, we have one file cabinet and it holds t-shirts because all of our stuff is in the cloud, 100%. We use Skyline Cloud Services for our hosting solution for all of our desktop. With cert, tax, all of that is all hosted. I have, I'm on a Mac right now. I can open up a tax return, do a tax return on my dashboard at Penn Station if I want to. So as far as hard copies go, we don't necessarily keep the hard copies. We scan it all in, and then from there, we you know, give, either give it back to the client or we shred it. But we always have an electronic copy. Now, interesting about tax is that the IRS code, if you read inside what are you required to retain? And so Skyline Cloud Services are, is our hosting solution. There's a, there's a handful that are, and you've got to make sure they're approved by Intuit. Let me just make that very clear. We have a large, I'm sidebarring for a second, but we have a huge client that is very well known that I cannot mention, who is using a hosted solution for QuickBooks Enterprise that, cannot, that is not an approved Intuit hosting solution. And you know what? Their stuff's all jacked up. So they ha they're having issues because they went outside of what, you know, what Intuit said, yes, like QBox. Okay, yes, QBox works. This is approved. We get it. Um, anyway, so as far as hard copies go, you know, the IRS, we have to prove the stuff. And so my point about the Internal Revenue Code, if you read inside, go to irs.gov go or Google it, my favorite thing, if you look for what they're willing to accept, you don't have to have those receipts. Remember the thermal receipts? Half the time, 2010, they're blank because they're thermal receipts and they're worn off. That is, that is still true today. That's something that you get in a hard receipt today in 10 years would likely be gone. You won't be able to read it. And so the IRS, we're finding a lot with regards to the tax, being able to prove all the backup for all the things that are going on, people don't have the hard copies. And so, you know, as far as a practitioner goes, we really need to make sure that, you know, I, I made mention today about mileage, mileage tracking for tax, you better have a mileage log because they're going to disallow your mileage. Now, we'll appeal that because that's ridiculous. They can't say you have none. But if you as the practitioner are advising your clients well, you're helping, helping move them into, direct, into a direction of using applications to securely store information, to securely track information. T-sheets, for instance, every single person in the whole wide world should have a travel item. And when you get into your vehicle for work, you put in your company name as the customer and you put the service item travel and it GPSs and follows your mileage. So now you have a kind of a two for one thing. And obviously there's other options, but you know, that that's probably the hottest thing in tax right now. I believe is that we, though we are not ordered as tax professionals to audit books, obviously, right? We're not, we don't have to audit a book, the books before we do a tax return. But we still have a level of due diligence. And we're definitely finding in these audits that we're coming, whether they're civil audits, which means they're just going to have to probably pay tax, or maybe it's a no change audit, or if it's a criminal audit, we're finding that, you know, I'll give you a, for example, we have a case right now, you take all the deposits from this guy's business bank account, and you look at the gross receipts on the tax return, and they're not even close. And that, I think, is the hottest thing for practitioners right now is, no, we don't have to audit them, but we should be still looking for reasonability 
and doing our due diligence to protect ourselves by saying, hey, you need to implement some systems and some applications and make sure you're protecting yourselves from what could be in the future. People are like, well, what if I get, I'm not going to get audited. Like I can, I can predict where I'm going to be in the next hour, like literally better than I can predict that. Like there's no, you know, you're going to get bit by a shark in the parking lot before I can predict that. Does that make sense? Do you want me to keep going? Because you're muted. <laughs> yeah, actually, we did. You did see there was another question. Someone was asking about Skyline. You recommended your hosting company of choice, so they were just wanting to verify the name of the hosting company. Well, interestingly for us, this you know, t this was we call this. I will be writing a book called the Tsunami Season. If anyone steals it, I'll kill them. That's just being honest. But um, this was a really, really tough tax season. And I believe there's a few reasons for that. Um, number one, I think people are becoming more and more impatient. I think people in, as people, not taxpayers, not just as people are on the go, great that they're mobile, they're moving at 90 million miles an hour, and they think that tax practitioners in 10 weeks can do thousands of returns, millions of returns across the country in 10 weeks. So it's not possible. I mean, by the time they let us submit a return, typically it's February 10th. So we, we can't even, and then of course they move the requirements back for W-2s and 1099s to January 31st. So we have now literally 31 days to do that and then immediately switch over to tax returns and you have 10 weeks. Mm -hmm. so now they're requiring us to gather licenses because of identity theft. So there are requirements for us that we are now kind of working for the government. You know, people don't want to pay us extra to do that administrative work of gathering licenses. But guess who absorbs that cost? We do. Mm -hmm. So that's been, I think that's been some of the, some of the challenges this past tax season. Um, we, we did a lot of process changes within our company. Mm -hmm. So we actually sent out, we used right signature this year. It doesn't mean I'll use right signature next year. I've actually had doing some work with Finograph that may change some, some things there, but you know, we sent all the signatures, the engagement letters, and basically sort of like a client planner, but we didn't, it's not a 50 page planner because nobody's going to do it. Um, so we send kind of the important questions. One of them in tax is foreign bank accounts. On that tax return, if you put in interest or dividend income on tax return, you have to check a box as a practitioner. Do you have a foreign bank account? Because people are not reporting the FBARs, which is foreign bank account activity. So historically, I think I didn't really pay a lot of attention to that checkbox personally because I'm like, you know, I don't think this guy's got one, you know, whatever. And now I'm making them answer that question. So we electronically make them fill out this thing. There's certain required fields and they got to sign their engagement. So that administrative work is done before I even either see them or pick up the return. And we won't touch it until we have that information. And so we, re we started really declaring this is how we're going to work in tax season. And I think we really picked up some momentum like towards the end. Um, and so towards the end of the season with our systems and we just really did a great job of perfecting the systems and, and really working with our clients to say, listen, like with QBox, we have clients on an island and logging onto their system is, can sometimes be challenging because of their internet strategies. But if they're using a, a tool that we're not having to worry about, like I'm so over log me in or team viewer or any of that stuff. It's just, to me, it's not the safest way to work with a client. Again, and I do a lot of criminal tax work, so I'm, I'm very paranoid. That was a Porsche, by the way, which would be really nice to drive. Um, that no little noise in the background. So, you know, I just find that right now, we as practitioners really need to gain control of what's going on, right? I'm finding issues with 1099Ks. So Robin was asking about like PayPal. PayPal issues the 1099K. We had an issue where a client had her gross revenue. We reported the $5,000 that got paid through PayPal because it was in the 1099K, but the client also issued a 1099. So now if the IRS looks at a 1099K and a 1099 miscellaneous, it looks like she's underreported her gross revenue. So we're finding some of those issues right now where you know, and we're prepared for it because we actually reconcile that stuff out. We say, okay, well, let's look at the 1099. We pull transcripts. Everybody should be pulling transcripts if you can. Well, there's two tax softwares that we use. One, are, one is tax help software where we get a, a power of attorney for the client to see what was reported on their behalf. 
we can't usually get the prior year right away. Like it take, it'll probably be another couple months, three months before you could pull a 16 transcript. But anything historical, if you want to see, you get a new client, you want to see what's going on with them in the tax world, you can look, pull it. Tax Help Software is one of them. The other one's Canopy. Uh, Canopy is more internet-based. Tax Help Software is more desktop-based. Um, both have great advantages and disadvantages, just like anything else, I think. Um, but we're just really focusing on a lot of due diligence right now when it comes to tax. And actually, I, I know we have a lot of financial professionals joining us today, and in general, that will be watching the recorded version. Uh, but we also do have some end user clients. And it's interesting now with the, the age of technology and cloud hosting and storage, uh, I think you know everybody in their minds kind of had this magic seven years number which came from nowhere. Mm -hmm. um, but, but now I've heard people also say that, uh, for example, local municipalities, local states, if they're requesting back returns, the IRS may follow suit and also become curious. So with that being said, should people be more aware and cognizant of keeping information for an extended period of time now that it's more readily available and easier stored? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. So we, as we get these cases that come forward and we always recommend, I should say, I've learned through these tax attorneys, our relationship's fantastic. Green and Sklar is out of New Haven. They're fantastic tax attorneys. And we just have a great working relationship. They'll get a tax case that comes in and we will, like I would never represent before the IRS, my client. I would bring in another professional. To, that's, it's, that's just kind of a strategy that we use, which I think, you know, where's the wood? It's probably in my head, you know, that we, I don't have a client that gets audited, but, um, but going back to the practitioners who prepared the return historically and getting their work papers, which they're not required to put, turn over. It's really, I think, a professional to professional common courtesy. Mm -hmm. uh, but we are finding, you know, we're going back to 2010, we're looking at a tax return. I'm sitting in front of an auditor in a summons situation where they've been summoned to the IRS. I go with them and, and we're sitting there going, you know, why, explain to me, sir, why your gross revenue is so much lower than your bank deposits. You know, this is from 2010. I don't remember. I wouldn't remember if it was my return. And then to try to get work papers to determine that. And I literally just look right in the auditor's eyes and I say, listen, he didn't prepare the return. He had a professional prepare the return. Two different things, self-prepared, professionally prepared. You can yeah. kind of put a little bit of, hey, the practitioner didn't do, this guy was doing you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars and they never even looked at a bank statement or the guy literally wrote stuff on a piece of paper and that's how he did the tax return. Like there was no data file, there was no nothing. So I guess my recommendation is don't think that because you have that I filed within the last three years that you're out of sa you're in the safety zone because you're not. Okay. And I think that that's been a, in the industry a little bit has been a little bit misleading even even my interpretation of it for many years. Mm -hmm. uh, but now that I'm seeing these cases, it's it's becoming more concerning. Um, mm -hmm. And practitioners are getting penalized. And and I want you know for me I just I work very very paranoid. I'm like, you're, no, you're not going to say it's about this many. Oh, it's about the same mileage as last year. And no, you know, and, and, and there are, so as practitioners, you know, we're under a lot of pressure right now. Mm -hmm. We're under a lot of pressure. Um, clients are, are having difficulty seeing our value because they just, you know, and I even talked today to the, to the entrepreneurs that were at this event, you know, your, your accountant doesn't run your company. You run your company. And I'm I'm like, wait a minute, I'm running my own company. I'm your tax preparer. I consult with you, but you run your company. Right. And I'll help you put in systems in place and those kind of things, but it's not going to be for free. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, the, in the industry, it's just an interesting time and place for all of us, whether it be in an app scenario, you know, where you're trying to say, hey, listen, you know, QBox, let's, let's stop this log me in stuff, which is like miraculous. Or T sheets, get your employees to submit their time. Stop just paying people based on 40 hours because that's what they've always done 40 hours mm -hmm. that's, you know yeah. the rules are changing okay. and people are we are we are going to be held responsible in some capacity if we're not careful and I'm, and i again i'm in this industry so i am paranoid and that's how i I'll operate well i think that <clears throat> so basically i think you kind of confirmed what i was saying because the irs knows that they should have more information available they're expecting to receive it 
so that that responsibility is growing greater on both sides for the the business owner which should be accountable for their own operation of their business in addition to their financial professional they're working with so it's, yeah and i i definitely think again and i and i said this today you know as an entrepreneur or a business owner or whatever you know it's not if you can't take responsibility for your own business mm -hmm. then you should be working for someone you should not be in business for yourself if you're not willing to take on the responsibility of running your company. First of all, unless you want to pay your accountant to run your company, which believe me, you want to pay me $150,000 a year, I'll do it all day long. And you know, I might even fire the owner. In your but, free time, Don. <laughs> what's that? I said in your free time. <laughs> in my free time, huh? I run their business. But, but don't expect to pay a couple thousand dollars a month and have your accountant run your company because right. you're, you're out of your mind. Yeah. Okay. I don't want to take any of Debbie's time either. What to, how, how long do I have another? You're doing okay, actually. So I didn't give you one of these yet or one of these yet. You're good. That was my water. <laughs> um, but I, you know, it's interesting. I think that even kind of dovetails into the, the general uh, perception of people that, gee, I'm going to start a business because I want more time off and it'll be easier. And, and I want more write-offs. You have that ridiculous stigma. Yeah, I have more write-offs. I can write off everything. And <laughs> you business owners get all the tax advantages because you get to write stuff off. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I'm almost killing my myself yeah I worked one day this year I worked literally overnight and I got locked out of my Jeep I don't know if anyone saw that on Facebook but 3 30 in the morning I went to get my Jeep and the cage is down and I'm like I might as well just go back to work so I did went right back into the office in New Haven and worked all the way through the night okay you know what I mean but next time you gotta call an uber and just go home <laughs> yeah well you know you know what I was very productive I watched the yeah. sun come up it was gorgeous yeah <laughs> you do whatever it takes but that's being a business owner. Like, suck it up. Yeah. Right. yeah. Well, then, and then now this piece that you're talking about, that's, that's what should give them the cold sweats and keep them up at night if they're not tracking themselves, reporting, you know, all of the information, managing themselves properly, providing proper information to their financial professional, and then, of course, to whatever entity they have to report to. So. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, what's interesting, too, Chris, is um, one mm -hmm. of the things that we're working on right now, and we've implemented value pricing, we started implementing it in February, didn't take off the way we expected, so we revamped it, and I want you to again June 1st, and, we're, and we are really, and I love Pumpkin Plan, if you haven't read it by Mike Michalowicz, mm -hmm. um, you know, we're pumpkin planning out clients that don't want to be in compliance. Because if people can't be in compliance, you are at risk as the practitioner. Like, not that it's your responsibility, but if you continue the habits of, you know, you do the same thing over and over again, it's called insanity, we know that. Yeah. So if you're still working with clients who are just, just you know, I want to say what I want to say, but just don't have it together, let's just say it that way, <laughs> um, then, then maybe it's time that they need to go in a different direction. If they want a more flexible tax preparer, then, they, then maybe they need to go to someone else. I, I just worked so hard for my license. I, I don't want to risk that be, for somebody because they want to write off an extra 10 grand on their tax return because they don't want to pay tax. Mm -hmm. I, like, right. like, I, I just, I'm just too ethical to do that. And those that ask, I tell them, you got to go somewhere else. But even the ones that I do have that, that are still not, you know, they come to us in February with their box of stuff. They're still doing it. I'm like, you know what? You're seriously paying double. And I tell them that straight out. You're seriously going to pay double because this is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So now we got to do your books and the return for all these clients within a small note. It's just crazy. Mm -hmm. And Robin tell that yes, I'm gonna be doing a course on how to run a tax practice, don't worry about that. Okay, more, more well, actually, that. I, I was gonna give you a chance. Um, Scaling New Heights, of course, is right around the corner and you, of course, are gonna be a speaker there. Um, what are your topics at Scaling this year? So I love that you asked that because, so I myself am just doing, two, I'm doing two fraud classes. I did them last year. Okay. Um, so I'm doing those two on Wednesday, but one of the the tax attorneys that I work with, Green Sklar, is Eric Green. He and I are doing a full track all about IRS representation, offers and compromise, um, how to represent eggshell audits, all these different types of things. And he and I are going to be co-presenting literally all week. Okay. So, and, and it's all going to be about how to build, you know, it's not going to be how to run the tax practice and how to run that representation practice, which we are going to be doing. Um, we're actually launching a company called Tax Genius this mm -hmm. tax attorney myself and another CPA and another attorney, um, all about IRS representation, how to do audits, how to run a practice, how to go from letter to like final closing of the audit, how to keep, lot, keep people out of criminal who are maybe in civil but steering towards a criminal. How do you keep them over in the civil area, which means they won't go to jail or mm -hmm. won't go to trial? 
okay. promote you know, and those kind of things. So we're launching this this company on June first. We'll start um, kind of like a, a session on Tuesdays that we'll be talking. We're going to bring on IRS representatives from like the head of the self employed division at the IRS. Okay. So we're bringing in like the big big hits of the IRS starting on July first. We're going to launch it June first, but we're going to start the series. We're going to it's going to be that part will all be free for people so they can. I mean, who doesn't want to talk to the head of the self-employed division of the IRS? Like, now yeah. I do. Yeah. <laughs> so, so those are some of the things that we're going to be doing, and, and it's just really exciting. Okay, excellent. Yeah, you mentioned a little bit to me before. Uh, and just so everyone knows, we'll have that information available on our website, Desktop Time. So we'll have the link for your, your new um, project Actually, you're working on. So uh, so everyone can get your new app. Yeah, you have to. Isn't that funny? Everybody says, "Where's your swag for desktop time?" And so we're creating <laughs> swag. You'll have to have swag for your new ventures. So. We already know. I already talked to the attorneys. I'm like, listen, everyone just wants a soft shirt like T-sheets. Just saying. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. Soft yeah, t see that? That's that's of course what I always go to. T-sheets blows all of us out of the water. They have the socks. They have the shirts. I mean, we just can't keep up. So, Everything. but anyways, we will have information on the website as well. So people after today, like Robin, who's been asking questions, yeah, Robin's great. Find out how they can access those resources um, going forward so um, so anyways thank you for taking the time to share with us today um, you still have time actually you have a few minutes. I do yeah. oh okay well let me tell you, you know why don't I give you a really nice example so I'm gonna give you an example of and I'm you said I could talk about tax so that's what I'm doing mm -hmm. um, so I will I will say with Skyline we have our tax software all hosted and and we literally Bob Babcock did an amazing job of making sure if LACERT sends updates like every five minutes and in some cases you can't um, actually continue with a return unless the update's been done and now if you're in a hosting environment that can be problematic so you have to make sure if you're going to host your desktop which we do in that case um, and if we have LACERT you want to make sure you have a provider that can can manage those updates on a regular basis for you Okay. Uh, but anyway, so I want to tell you about this one case that we had. Um, and so the tax attorneys, they'll call me. And when he says, when he texts me, says, call me, like, I get all pumped. So I want to take out my eye black, put on my bulletproof vest. and it's <laughs> Tell it on, geared up. <laughs> I'm so super pumped. Like, I get jacked. Because I know I was like, I'm saving another taxpayer. So uh, we had this one, and he looked at me, and he said, just keep this guy out of criminal. And I said, okay, that's my job. That's all I got to do. Mm -hmm. So we restructured the book, you know, not restructured, that's not the right term, but we recalculated, we, we put a whole new QuickBooks file together based on their factual data, not what they told us, but what we could prove, okay. because you have to prove the numbers. Once you go to an audit, you got to say, okay, listen, I know that was the tax return then, this is what we can prove today, so there may be a mismatch here and there, and then they either accept it or they don't. And in this case, we not only kept the guy out of a criminal audit, thankfully, it was a three-year audit, it ended up being a three-year audit. Mm -hmm. um, he ended up, uh, we ended up not going criminal, stayed civil, and I had a $24,000 fraud penalty removed from, from the audit, mm -hmm. okay. which was super cool because, yeah. you know, they can, even in a civil case, they can impose many different penalties. And Eric and I will be talking a lot about that at Scaling New Heights. Um, they can, you know, they can give you a fraud penalty. They can give you an inaccuracy penalty. So meaning this return based on what you've given us for backup is so jacked up. It's so inaccurate. And they penalize the taxpayer. And I say to them, okay, so I think that that bill should be split between the taxpayer and the preparer. And again, I'm not saying that preparers have to do audits or we just have to do our due diligence. And in some cases that we're seeing that tax preparers have historically relied on literally scratch piece of paper, pieces of paper. Now I wasn't around for those days. I've only been a CPA for a handful of years, for maybe three or four or four years, I think. I, I, I wanted to wait till I had kids. I was like, I might as well go to school. I don't I don't wanna, you know, stay home and do this mothering thing. Um, which I will say I'm proud of my daughter going to American University this fall. Yeah, so cool. proud of her. Emily Brolin, love her. She's going to be <laughs> in, in uh, musical theater and political science. She'll probably be the president, so everybody vote for her. She's very smart. She's exactly like her mom. But um, yeah, so those kind of cases are very, for me are very exciting because I feel like I want to first do my research and find out what's going on. And then from there, determine if, you know, they're in a problem. And I always tell them, and boy, they come in very emotional, mm -hmm. very emotional when they're, when they're civil or criminal audit. They really, in a lot, and you can tell right away whether they're genuine or not. And literally, we are their parents. And where I hug them, 
I tell them when I start freaking out, I'll let you know when you can start freaking out. If I'm freaking out, you should be freaking out until then you don't have any right. Like they, I had a guy text me this morning. He's like, I'm still losing weight. I'm like, stop it. Eat a candy bar, man. I will tell you when you're in trouble, chill. And, 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 and I understand though, it's a big, big deal when you are getting audited. It's a big deal. And you as yeah. a professional have to handle the client and you have to handle the auditor properly. And those are some of the things in Tax Genius that we're going to talk about the strategies around that. Okay, excellent. Yeah, okay. I can imagine it's a terrifying time for people. It would be for me, though, oh, to, to have yeah. someone that's an expert and a professional that can, and, and I love that line too. You, when I say you're, you're in trouble, you're in trouble. <laughs> when you yep. need to worry, when I say that, you need to worry. So, yeah, and I always do tell people, like, listen, when I tell you these kinds of things, like if I'm doing a presentation, I'm like, I'm not trying to scare you. I'm trying to prepare you. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not trying to say to you, everyone's going to get audited and you better have your books. And if you don't have them, you're going to jail. Like, that's ridiculous. But if you can show compliance and improvement in your processes, like T-sheets, from an employment perspective, if you can show, hey, Department of Labor, look, we made a change because we had an issue at one point and now we're moving in this direction. Mm -hmm. You know, you're showing an improvement. But if you're going to keep doing the same stuff year after year after year and then you get caught, you don't change. You know what? That's on you, man. Yeah. Okay. That's just what I'm saying. But I don't want to take okay. any Debbie's time. All right. Yeah. So thank you very much, Don. Really appreciate it. Thank you for joining us today. Um, we'll look forward to all of those that are going to scaling. We'll look forward to seeing you there at scaling as well in Florida. And yep. uh, we will go ahead and transition. I took a few minutes from Debbie, but we'll go ahead and transition over to Debbie. And she's going to introduce us to T-sheets and all the wonderful attributes to online time tracking. So Debbie... Uh, one thing I didn't mention at the outset, Debbie, um, if you want to go ahead and share your screen, which I'm assuming you'd like to, um, there's there's the option between sharing your desktop and sharing an application. You probably want to pick your desktop if you're changing yes. between different applications, just so you know. And I'll mute myself because I will interrupt Debbie the whole time, but I will just gonna mute for myself for now, and I'll jump in and interrupt her like I always do in every demo she does for me. <laughs> okay, perfect. Oh, it is. It's always a pleasure, Don, to be able to be on a call with you in whatever format it takes. So I, I hope that most of you on the call have had a chance to meet Don at some point or do get the chance to meet her at some point because Don is absolutely amazing. And here at T-Sheets, we truly do adore her. And she actually came out and visited us last fall. Or no, gosh, it was like a year ago now, wasn't it? Almost a year ago. Oh. Way too long since the last visit. So. I agree. <laughs> working on that. Don't worry. Come visit our new building. We're actually in, in the process of moving into a brand new, much larger building. Yeah, I was there when you guys were building it, so I can't yep. wait to come back. Yep, it's, it's pretty phenomenal. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about T-sheets and time tracking and time tracking that's in the cloud, but that actually syncs to QuickBooks Desktop beautifully. And I, and I love it when, um, you know, a lot of our clients are still on desktop. A lot of them are on online as well. But um, you know, a lot of our clients are still on, on QuickBooks Desktop, which is fantastic. And um, because I know that QuickBooks Desktop gives a ton of reporting and functionality um, that is really, really vital to uh, to a lot of industries. So T-Sheets is a software that is in the cloud, but like I said, it does sync very well um, to QuickBooks uh, Desktop as well as QuickBooks Online. So, oops. Don't want to go too far there. So just a little bit about our company, and then we'll get into the software, and I'll kind of show you a little bit around T-Sheets. Um, like I said, we are cloud-based uh, time tracking. We also do scheduling. Uh, and with uh, the ability to track time in a number of different ways, whether it's on a computer, on a smartphone, on a tablet, um, lots of different options there because we know that different businesses have different needs. And you might wonder, well, why in the world would, would you want to track time? Well, there's, there's a lot of reasons why. Don mentioned paying employees accurately, you know, rather than just, well, they're all full-time, so we just pay them for 40 hours. Well, they might be full-time in theory, but they might only be really working like 37 and a half hours a month, you know, a week. Um, and it's very common to find when people switch from paper time tracking to electronic time tracking that their hourly employees are a little bit surprised that uh, their paychecks might not be quite as much as they expected because they haven't actually been working their full 40 hours. It's really easy for us to um, you know, just round off our timesheets when we really maybe came in a few minutes late or we jetted out a couple minutes early to beat the traffic or took a few minutes longer for lunch than, than we should have, you know, because we're meeting up with our, you know, well, for me, it'd be meeting up with my mom or something for lunch. So 
time tracking is really, really critical. And we, we give the opportunity to track time, whether it's away from the office, in the office, um, in a warehouse environment on a tablet or a kiosk, you know, lots of different options for that. We have definitely, uh, continued over the years. We've been around for actually 11 years this month, and we've continued over the years to build out our product truly based on what our clients are asking for. Uh, we crave feedback from our clients, and we give that feedback to our developers, and they build our roadmap of development based on what our clients are asking for. We don't want to build a time tracker that we think is cool and that has the features that we want. We want to continue to develop a time tracker that is truly based on what our clients need. Um, to make their lives a lot better. And our co-founder and CEO, Matt Rissell, um, was a small business owner before starting T-Sheets. He didn't grow up dreaming of starting a time tracking company, but he had a small business and stumbled upon one day his employees sort of padding their timesheets, uh, putting in the time they were scheduled to leave work versus the time they actually left work. And at that time, back in 2005, uh, he looked for an electronic time tracking solution. And the only thing he could find that wasn't paper and pencil, which is what they'd been doing, was a big old clunky time clock that would sort of sit on the counter. You guys remember those, right? You had to get your little piece of paper and you sort of could junk it into the hole. I used to use one of those back in the day and <laughs> that's all he could find and it wasn't very efficient he had three different locations of his business and he needed something that was in the cloud so he got together with a friend of his who's a developer and they uh, and Brandon um, the friend actually built the first rendition of T-Sheets it was their bookkeeper it was Matt's bookkeeper that actually said that he should try to go to market with this because of the incredible amount of money he saved in the first payroll period alone it was somewhere in the neighborhood of like twelve hundred dollars just in one pay period of savings with actual efficient and real time tracking so that's where T-Sheets was born, um, and we've continued to grow really uh, based on, on what our clients are needing. So just a couple really quick highlights before I jump into the product itself. We have the ability to schedule time within T-Sheets. The scheduling component is uh, about a year old, and adds some really great reporting, but also works incredibly well with the mobile app for helping people to clock into the correct job, service item, class, whatever it is that we're tracking that time against. I mentioned being able to track time from multiple different places and spaces, whether you're sitting in front of a computer like I do every day, or if you're out and about meeting with clients or at job sites, lots of flexibility in how that time gets entered. And then real-time reporting on time, uh, being able to run uh, quite a number of different reports from right within T-Sheets itself and being able to get that uh, those reports based on time that's been tracked up to the minute, um, as well as some really handy little uh, bells and whistles like overtime alerts, which are actually one of my favorites. It gives you the ability to know when people are hitting overtime uh, rather than being surprised when you go to run payroll and realize, holy mackerel, my employees really blew up their overtime in the last two weeks. Um, so with overtime alerts, you can be made aware before those things happen. And also being able to track things like paid time off and make edits and things like that very easily. So with that, I'm actually going to go ahead and jump into a T-Sheets demo account just to kind of give you a little bit of a taste of how time actually gets into the system. Now we know that it's not one size fits all. Different businesses have different needs. Some businesses need to know when their employees started or stopped work on a particular project. Uh, some just need to know when do their employees work. We can simplify T-sheets down to just hours for the sake of hours. And I find that with a lot of our retail or restaurant clients, they just need to know when do my employees get here? When do they leave? I just need to pay them for when they were here. And we can simplify it down to just hours, or we can add additional, um, I call them data points, but additional things to track time against so that you get more, much more robust reporting um, after the time has been tracked. So when we're integrated with QuickBooks Desktop, we can import the employees, the customers, the service items, the classes. We can even turn on a billable choice. Um, and have the employees really easily track time against those things and then export that time back to QuickBooks with all of those 
components tied to the timesheets. The beauty of that is when you run your payroll out of QuickBooks Desktop, you have very accurate hours to run payroll off of. If it's a business that needs to track time based on projects um, or clients or customers that they're working on, perhaps for billing purposes or reporting purposes, you can get, again, very accurate, efficient time for billing those customers or for running you know, your different reports like your you know, profit loss by customer or, or the different reports that you need to run. So to get time into T-Sheets, just really briefly, this is one of the methods of doing that. This is what I call the punch style time card. Um, it's actually labeled my time card. Um, but with this one, I'm sort of punching in and punching out. Um, I can go down the list, find the customer that I need to track time against this afternoon. And uh, then I can go ahead and select the sub job. And this customer and sub job, it came from, I'm sorry, this computer is being funny for me. Um, came over from QuickBooks. So I don't have to do any duplicate data entry on that stuff. We'll just import it from QuickBooks, um, which is really nice. It's already in QuickBooks. We don't need to bother you know, reinventing the wheel in T-Sheets. I'm also going to go ahead and select whether or not this time is billable. I'm yeah, tracking I'm, time. Yeah. yeah. I'm really sorry. I hate to interrupt, but um, Don's okay. actually um, leaving us at the moment. So I just wanted to, I'm so sorry to cut you off. But That's okay. I, I think I overstayed my welcome in my spot. Uh, you're outside of Penn Station, which, uh, you know, I just want everyone to know that I've been out here for like an hour and nobody, <laughs> it's dangerous for America in my opinion, but um, no, but I, I wanted to just make a comment about this. Um, one of the things that we love about the T-Sheets app, and we're obviously, we use it, I, I probably check the phone app every five minutes to see who's working on what. And if you think I'm kidding, you can ask Tracy to sit right here. It's constant because as a business owner, you've got to pay paying attention to what's happening with your employees. And we just don't know that. Um, as a matter of fact, they will rat on each other. So in case you're wondering, <laughs> we've had an employee clocked in and they were writing a college paper. And guess what? Another employee ratted on them. <laughs> and they will protect you as the business owner. So you better be honest, you know, employees, it will make them each be accountable to each other as well. So I think that that's just something that, you know, people think outside the box, get it, Q box, come on. Um, <laughs> thinking outside of the box in that perspective. But I just want to jump in on that because, you know, I've got, and I, and I love how billable, non-billable, I do my invoices in five seconds and I pay my employees in five minutes. And, I, and it's not a pain point for me. And I'm using QuickBooks Desktop. It's fantastic. I just want to make sure that I got that in there, Debbie, you know, because I would interrupt you the entire time. You know that. <laughs> Perfectly fine. I'll take it. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much again, Don. Thank you, Chris. All right. Drive safe. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Without the, without the laptop working. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Debbie. Thank you. Oh, that's quite all right. Quite all right. Um, so I'm also going to go ahead and select a task here or service item uh, that my employee is working on. This is going to tie back in because I marked the time billable. When I send this over to QuickBooks, QuickBooks knows that for this service item, tree and shrub removal for this fictitious landscaping company here, what the billable rate is on that. So it's going to make it really, really super fast and easy. When you do that invoicing, like Don mentioned, um, invoicing goes really, really fast because in just a few clicks, the employees have really put everything here in T-Sheets that needs to go on to that invoice. You can even add in notes, um, you know, a removed a two a large, I don't know, poplar trees uh, or whatever the case may be. There's about a 2,000 character limit on that note field and that note will populate on the invoices as well. So the employees can just kind of track this stuff as they go, um, switching from job to job throughout the day with this you know, little switch button makes life super, super easy. And if you didn't notice, over here on the right-hand side with this who's working window, like Don said, you can keep track of who's doing what. So Becca is currently clocked in um, doing that tree removal task. Um, and so you can see who's on the clock, what they're working on, how long they've been on the clock. And if somebody should be on the clock by now and they're not, you know that. With paper, you don't know that sort of thing. But with something like T-Sheets, you can see up to the minute who is working and who isn't working. And it's going to help not micromanage the employees, but just help that business owner know um, where the employees are and what they're working on. 
There's also, for those that perhaps don't really care so much about start and stop times, we have what we call the manual time card. This is more of a spreadsheet style. I find that this type of time card uh, tends to be preferable among things like architecture firms, law firms, where they need to, to track their time to the different projects or clients that they're working on. They don't necessarily want to tie their employees to the clock, like the punching in, punching out, but they do need to know how much time uh, was worked. With this one, very much like paper and pencil, um, we'll just go ahead and choose the customer again. Um, in this case, we'll also go ahead and pick a sub job. We'll say, well, today, what is today? Today's Wednesday, right? Uh, today I worked five and a half hours on this particular job. Go ahead and put in the billable that class, whatever it might be, and the service item. And then again, there's that notes field where you can put in notes as to what you were doing. Just hit the save button and that time entry is saved. So options, not pigeonholing every company into one set way of tracking time, but giving lots of choices. Beautiful mobile app as well that will um, also give you on the who's working window a GPS point so you know where exactly the employee is at any given time. Uh, after time is in the system, the next step is being able to run reports and, and make edits to the time if necessary. You can also use the pay time off uh, button here to enter in PTO. Um, PTO is highly customizable. Employees with this one can also see, apologize, the computer I'm working on is just, I'm on a Mac but running a parallel with, um, uh, with QuickBooks. Um, so it's, it's goofy. <laughs> this particular computer is, I'm sure a lot of you out there feel my pain. Um, I'm a PC girl working in a Mac office. It's pretty fun. Uh, <laughs> but we can track PTO and T-sheets, um, track regular time, overtime, set the overtime rules uh, to be customized according to what the client needs. After time is in, their next step is to run reports. I'm just going to cover a couple different reports. Then I'm going to actually export some time over to QuickBooks so you see where it shows up over there. So project report is one that um, is actually one of my favorites. And with this, I can, I wish I wasn't getting that funny little pop down. Every time I click on something, I can go ahead and select the appropriate time frame, hit run report, and see at a glance where exactly the time is going. The different customers we've tracked time against, the number of hours for each, things like sick time, vacation, uh, lunch breaks. If you're tracking lunch breaks, that'll all show up here as well. Gives you the opportunity to really see where exactly the time is going who's been working how many hours, how much of the time is billable versus not billable. That's not too bad. And then in this case, there's about eight hours that wasn't tracked or wasn't set as billable yes or no, and that's, that's that eight hours of sick time that my employee tracked. I can also see a breakdown by class, by service item, and drill down deeply um, into any piece of this to see, okay, well, this plowing time, for example, what clients did we track that on? Okay, so lots of insight into where exactly the time is going. So in addition to that uh, project report, we also have about 20 others. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit the approvals report because it's really important we touch on that one so I can export some time. Before time can be sent over to QuickBooks, we have to first approve it. So again, this report can be run by week, by pay period, for a custom date range. I'm just going to run it for last week and see my employees. Now I have two employees whose time was already approved and already exported, but I'm going to go ahead and take a look at a tray use time. Last week he tracked 43 and a quarter hours. Uh, red means he went into overtime, so we've got cues, color cues throughout, so you know what time exactly um, was tracked. We can see all of Atreyu's different um, timesheets that he entered. And if I need to, I can even make edits. So I can hit this little paper and pencil button and edit that timesheet, make some changes to it, correct it, make sure it's accurate before we um, approve it and send it over to QuickBooks. I'm going to go ahead and just approve that time. Okay, timesheets are now approved. They're locked for editing and they are ready for us to send over to QuickBooks. So to do that with desktop, what I'm going to do is, oops, get this out of the way here. 
pull up my desktop file. There we go. I'm going to go up to the file button down to update web services because we use the um, Intuit Sync Man or the Web Connector. Gosh, Sync Manager. That's a blast from the past. Oh my word, I haven't said that in a long time. <laughs> We're going to use the Web Connector and go ahead and run that. It is a two way sync. So, any new customers that I have in QuickBooks or new employees that need to come over into T Sheets will um, go ahead and be sent over to T Sheets. At the same time, any approved time will be pulled from T Sheets over into QuickBooks. And this, Chris, is where you can sing a little song if you want to. <laughs> oh, I didn't warm up yet. I don't think I should. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> there. Well, good. The sync is complete. You've been saved. <laughs> okay. Thank goodness. Thank you, Web Connector. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so once that time is synced, we can find it in the weekly timesheets in QuickBooks. So if I go over here to weekly timesheet, I'm going to pick a tray you. It's actually a, a, the name of one of my coworkers' dogs. <laughs> um, go ahead and find the week of time that I sent over. This is a problem when I don't make a note of what week of time I sent over. Hold on a sec. I think I have some user error going on here. 5.7 to 5.13. There we go. Gotta love it when I'm on a live webinar and it's not showing up the way it should. Oh. <laughs> Not good. Well, this is where, from a troubleshooting perspective, I would go check this company file and make sure that my um, my uh, time frames all matched up, and uh, as far as like week start date and things like that. But I know that yesterday we did send some time over for Jake as well. So we'll just look at Jake's time. Sorry about that. Um, so what T-Sheets has populated is the customer and sub job, the service item. If the time is marked billable, the billable rate is tied to that service item in QuickBooks. Um, any sick time is called out as sick time will attach the correct payroll items to that time. Um, on, on the T-Sheet side, we'll import the payroll items and map them appropriately. If uh, if you need to track like prevailing wage, um, we can help with that as well because we'll just attach the correct payroll items to whatever it is that triggers that prevailing wage situation. Any time that's marked billable here on the t um, in T sheets and sent over to QuickBooks as billable, you can then just go over into your um, customer invoices or your cust yeah your customer invoices. And create your invoices based on that time. Mm, I know. Um, and vendor bills as well. Um, if you track time for a vendor within T-Sheets, you can very easily cr um, create your vendor bills, which is one of the beautiful things about QuickBooks Desktop is that ability to, with just a, two clicks of a button, create your vendor bills based on time that was tracked. Okay. We did have one question that mm -hmm. popped up, by the way. Um, someone was asking, yeah. if they're not using QuickBooks, can they use T-Sheets as a standalone time tracking system? So that, yes. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful question, and thank you for asking that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, T-Sheets works very well, either synced with um, with accounting software or, or, or your payroll software. It also works extremely well as a standalone product, definitely. Okay. You can still have all the same functionality, just without the convenience of sending it over to your accounting solution with a click of a button. But they can probably still extract reports into mm -hmm. cell format or um, CV. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Yes. In fact, uh, there's only one one of our reports that uh, has the the project report has those pie charts. Everything else downloads to a CSV format, mm -hmm. and so from there you can manipulate to your heart's content. I've Perfect. been learning about pivot tables lately. What you can do with those in Excel, it's amazing. <laughs> okay, and that same individual is asking, does it sync with IOP four A? Mm -hmm. Yes. That. Okay. Yeah, so we right. did yeah. recently, yeah, we did recently roll out an integration with Intuit Online Payroll, which is oh. amazing. So all of you out there on the call that, that use IOP, you can sing now uh, because T-Sheets does integrate with Intuit Online Payroll. Okay. Um, so mm -hmm. that's beautiful. Okay. Mm -hmm. that, she's singing for you. You <laughs> answered the question the way she wanted to hear it. <laughs> beautiful. She's chat singing. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Any other good questions for me out there? This is just kind of scratching the surface of what T-Sheets can do. Um, but if there are any other questions out there? 
Hey, I can, I'll ask kind of fun some questions. So uh, this is actually the first time I've seen this much of a demo, so I really appreciate it. But for our end user clients that are considering T-Sheets, I'm assuming it, it works with any size company, small to X number, mm -hmm. uh, and, and of course simplifies their tracking process, but it'll integrate with any payroll system if you can do a CSV export out of the system. Uh, that is correct. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Um, so who can we talk to regarding different client requirements to see if this will work? Perfect. Me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so one thing you can do is um, from our website, tsheets.com, uh, you can just dial into our support number here. Option four is for um, accounting professionals, and that'll get you through to our support team. I'm the pro support team lead here. Um, although any, even if you don't make it all the way through to option four, our customer experience team is amazing. I really encourage you to go out to apps.com or into its app center and uh, you'll see that there's over 2,000 five-star reviews uh, on apps.com for t-sheets. I know that that sounds like I'm bragging. Um, I kind of am <laughs> trying to brag humbly. Is, if that's possible. <laughs> um, but I, I encourage you to go take a look at some of those reviews. But yes, absolutely call in. You can ask for me. Um, and then we'll just, you know, talk through what the needs of that specific business are and how to structure a T-Sheets account to get you what you need out of that time tracking. Okay, perfect. And we do have a special program just for uh, accounting professionals. So if you go to our website and hit this accountants tab, you are in that uh, accounting, bookkeeping, you know, CPA space, definitely come check out um, our accountants page here. This is actually a picture from, I think it might be scaling last year or it might be QuickBooks Connect. I'm not really sure. Um, can't remember which one this is. It might actually be Connect, but a photo of a couple of our um, pro support team members here. But there's a lot of really great information in here um, specific to accounting professionals. Okay. Fantastic. And just so everyone knows, I mean, I think everyone knows how to find T-sheets, but um, we do also have the links on the Desktop Time website, and they'll continue to be there also under uh, past guests, um, vendors, or hosts. So we'll have information ongoing available there as well. So um, you know, either do your traditional Google search, or you can find it also from the Desktop Time website. Um, so there was one more question. All from the Oh, this is someone different. Currently have an account but had issues forever ago with QBO Sync, Intuit issues. Mm -hmm. Love the app. Not sure who to reach out to for help. Me. Nicole, reach out to me. Okay. Um, so again, my name is Debbie, and you can reach mm -hmm. me by just dialing this number and, and ask for me. Um, there's also, and I, I don't have a slide with this on there, but if you grab a pen uh, or your notepad um, on your computer, pro support at tsheets.com. It's my email address. I'll get to me directly. And I would love to talk through uh, the sync issues that you had in the past, see if we, um, if we have resolution for those, see if we can get you back up and running on T-Sheets. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And I think that covers our questions that are outstanding. Um, so just in general, so um, anything else you want to wrap up? Any other suggestions? They can obviously get information about purchasing or comparing mm -hmm. to their particular situation. Uh, and, and support if they're already using it, of mm -hmm. course. You reference how they can get access to you um, through the different resources. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, thank you very much for joining us today. Again, I learned a lot about T-Sheets. I'm, I'm used to just seeing them on the exhibition floor as I can QB Connect and say, <laughs> I know that. And I've heard a lot of the positive, too. In fact, we all are envious of the, those five-star ratings, people that are very satisfied, obviously, with the product. And, and just even as a, as a person that enjoys reading about, you know, sister businesses, um, just seeing the, the success that T-Sheets has had, really mm -hmm. develop, developing a product that, that works specifically with their target audience, which um, sounds like Matt was very involved with, so he knew what the needs were, and T-Sheets has been built to fulfill those needs. So uh, a very good product. We thank you very much for joining us today. And uh, we look forward to working and also – just we don't we don't brag too much either about QBox. That's not part of desktop time, but um, we do have a number of uh, folks that are using T Sheets mm -hmm. integration with their file that they're sharing through uh, QBox. So uh, it is a product that will integrate with a, a desktop product they're sharing through QBox as well. So, mm -hmm. so thank you very much again for joining us today, Debbie. Um, we'll go ahead and just do some some wrap up discussion. Actually, a couple more questions has popped through. Let me make sure we cover everyone. Um, <clears throat> 
Can you schedule re recurring tasks in the software? Yes. Uh, yeah, with the schedule, you, you can uh, do recurring tasks, scheduling up to a year at this point. Okay, perfect. All right, well, we do want to thank everyone again for joining us today uh, for our May desktop time. Uh, for a lot of you financial professionals, you're probably uh, planning to head to Florida next month for Scaling New Heights. So, and I know definitely all of us will be there. And so we'll look forward to meeting you. If you have a minute, stop by and visit uh, the T-Sheets booth where you can hear Don speak at some of the um, events that she mentioned. And we'll also be there. Um, desktop time will be there with QBox and our, um, our other alter personality. So uh, we'd love for you to stop by and just introduce yourself and, and shake our hands and, and get to know you a little bit better. Uh, next month, uh, we already have our speakers lined up. If you visit our website, we're actually going to have some returners. The, the very famous and popular Marriott Martinez and Joanne Del Balsa will be back. And they'll actually be talking about and we'll have representation from HubDoc as well. So. Uh, we look forward to having you back next month. Uh, if you haven't visited the Desktop Time website yet, we really encourage you to do that. We're actually finishing our schedule for the remainder of the year, so you'll see some of the upcoming uh, Desktop Times that maybe speak specifically to your particular business area or area of expertise. Uh, but we really appreciate you taking the time to join us today. And thank you again to um, Debbie. We thank Don also, who already had to escape. Uh, but thank you very much for your time, and we'll look forward to seeing you next month. Thanks again. Thank you, Chris. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.